Hello everybody, Marlene, aka Snow Gardener 307. I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight because today is the day when you learn the numbers for our three-year debt payoff journey and I also learn. So I have pulled the figures, but I have not added them up. So I don't know if we went up in debt or if we went down. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. All right, everybody. So we've got numbers. I have written down numbers, but I have not totaled them. So I have no idea where we're at. And I procrastinated this month, you guys, for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I was afraid. And you guys know here on my channel, I always keep it real with you. So uh, these are our real numbers. I'm going to show you our 2020 numbers, which is where we started. Our numbers last year, so 2022. And our numbers this year, 2023. But before I get started, I want to let my new subscribers know a little bit about my debt journey and how it started. So three years ago, the world was in mad chaos because of the pandemic. And it really gave me time to reflect on not only myself, but my budget, right? And I was a hot mess. And I had started um, a little bit of budgeting before my husband actually did. And he saw the progress that I made in a short amount of time. And then he asked me to do his budget as well. And as a couple, for anybody that doesn't know, we do budget separately. He has his pay, his bills. I have my pay, I have my bills. And then together we have our bills. And also sinking funds and uh, savings goals and sinking funds goals and all of that type of stuff. But we do budget separately. And no, you guys, we're not going to change that. It works amazing for us. And I think one of my favorite things about it is neither of us has to justify any sort of expense to the other. If I want to buy something, I can buy it. Now, generally larger purchases, like if you've been watching my channel this year, you know that I paid off my car and then decided to get a new car, which you guys are going to see in the debt update today. Um, I did talk to my husband. I said, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Do you think it's smart? Because I wanted his opinion, not only for finances, but also for vehicles. And he did a little bit more research for me on the model and the year of the vehicle I was looking at. And so we still make financial decisions together, but we don't have to answer to each other for our money. And like I said, that works out really well for us. And so three years ago, world was a disaster. Um, my job was secure for anybody that doesn't know I work in law enforcement, so it's not going anywhere. And so I knew my job was secure. However, to lessen the chances of us being exposed, we were given on call days. And so we had certain days that we were staying home. And so that gave me more time to watch YouTube and gather more facts. And, um, I had followed Dave Ramsey years and years before, and it just didn't work for me. And so I had to find something different. And so I found the budget mom and her concept of, yes, you need to pay your debt off, but you also need to save and you also need to live your life was the perfect answer for me and for my husband. And if you guys have been watching for the past three years, you know that we have taken multiple vacations and we're getting ready to go on a vacation very shortly. <laughs> And then also we're saving for two vacations next year. We're headed to Mexico to celebrate my son's graduation this year. And then next year we're going to be going to Mexico again. My husband and I are going to get our advanced scuba dive certificates. And then in the fall, we're going to be headed to Australia for a trip of a lifetime. So that is important for us. But if you would have told me that I'd be able to afford that three years ago without putting it on credit cards, and leaving it on credit cards, I would have told you you were crazy. Um, well, I think we both make a good wage. We are far from you know upper class or anything, but we're right middle class. So we're definitely not low income, so we do have some more money. But of course, you guys know how it generally works. The more money you make, the more money you spend. We also make fairly good money, 
but we live in a small town that has a really high cost of living with only one grocery store, with very limited choices as far as cell phones and internet, and also the housing market here is pretty high. So that's another thing to take into consideration. I know there have been several of you guys that have reached out to me via personal messages or just comments on my videos um, encouraging me and saying that I've encouraged them. And I'm so excited because that is why we continue to do this and that is why I continue to film my journey. My journey. I have no idea, you guys, we made a lot of changes this last year, the last 12 months. My husband, for anybody that doesn't know, started a brand new company, so he actually makes less money now than he did before he went into the business venture, but the opportunity is there to make more money, and so we know this, so we have to see the bigger picture at the end, and he took a huge leap of faith, and I'm so excited for him and so proud for him. And for me, my budget, I just talked to you guys about this, I think in mm, the past couple videos, my budget just changed. Um, I lost one source of income, so I have less income now. And also, our sheriff's office has um, put a stop to overtime. So now there's still gonna be opportunities because there's times where we have to run a minimum of a certain number of deputies. So there's still gonna be some overtime, but not like what it was. So overtime is what helped me pay for more of our trips and stuff. So we'll see what that looks like going forward because it is still an important factor in our lives. And so I'm going to give you guys, for anybody that doesn't know the beginning of my journey, I had over $48,000 in credit card debt. That's right, $48,000 in credit card debt. And my husband had his own debt. And when we started this journey, you're going to see the numbers. It's not broken down for my husband. And that's because he was embarrassed by his debt. And so many of us are taught to keep financial stuff a secret. You don't ask somebody how much money they make or how much their car payment is or what they have in savings or what they invest in. And I'm so excited that the YouTube community has blown this up into something that no, we do need to talk about this. We need to learn from each other. And unfortunately, I did not learn how to finance things or how to budget my money from my parents. Does it mean they were awful with money? No, but I didn't know how they were paying for stuff. I didn't see the things that they were doing and the work that they were putting in to pay for stuff. So I'm excited to share this update with you but I'm also a little bit nervous because things have changed. I used to be able to tell you guys that I was credit card debt free. I can't tell you that anymore um, because when I purchased my car, I did some creative financing and have money on a credit card. And we've also been doing home remodel projects, not large projects, but smaller ones that add up. So our Home Depot card has a balance on it. I will let you guys know that all of our credit card debt that we have is at 0%. So we're not paying any interest on any of this credit card debt. And I think that makes a big difference. And so even though I have credit card debt again, it's not the same $48,000 that I had three years ago that on multiple cards I was paying interest on. So it's a different financial world for me right now than it was three years ago. And I have learned how to use credit cards responsibly. And so we do still use our American Airlines, our Hawaiian Airlines, and also I have a Hyatt credit card. And I'm thinking about using my Capital One Venture card a little bit more um, for travel points. And so this year for Mexico, I was able to fly my son and his cousin to Mexico for free using those points. And of course, this is just using um, the travel cards for things such as groceries and gas and other expenditures that we have. So there are ways to use credit cards to your advantage if you're smart about it. And being smart with your credit cards is one of the things that so many of us are not because how the heck did I end up with $48,000 in credit card debt? Do I have something big to show for it? Of course not. Um, a lot of us that have been in credit card debt know that it starts out with a whole bunch of little expenditures and maybe the budget isn't where you want it to so you go ahead and buy that outfit for yourself or you go ahead and take that trip even if you can't afford it because you deserve it right you deserve to travel or you deserve that outfit or you deserve that coffee every day whatever it is and we know that this makes a big difference so 
When the pandemic hit, even though I knew my job was secure, the world was very uncertain. And my husband's job was not secure. At that point, he worked in the oil field. And so we weren't sure. We were like, okay, if he loses his job right now, we're, you know what? We are in so much trouble. We did not have savings, which you guys were going to see. Not only today am I going to share debt numbers, but I'm going to share some savings numbers with you guys as well. We didn't have anything. We did have $1,000 cash. Um, and I think we had cash or it was in the bank or something. But you guys know $1,000 is not enough. It's a great place to start. That's one of the baby steps for Dave Ramsey is $1,000. But for us, $1,000 isn't going to last long. And so for us, we're still continually working on our emergency savings. And my emergency savings has changed because I actually use part of my emergency savings to pay off my card. Was that a smart decision? That's what I wanted to do. We all do this debt-free journey differently. And so that's what I chose to do. And I am excited to say that my debt is already down quite a bit for what I did for my car. So we'll share that. And I just want each and every one of you to know that no matter what your debt numbers are, no matter what you make in a month or in a year, no matter where you live, little things really add up. On my channel, I stuff pennies into Georgette because every penny adds up on this channel. And when I first started doing things, I would pay an extra five, 10 bucks. Whenever I had extra money, I was making payments. So I was making multiple payments because if I just kept that five or 10 bucks, then I was gonna spend it on probably something that I didn't need. So just remember that. I want you guys to stay the course and know that everybody's journey looks different and don't be disheartened by those who you know, maybe come on your channel and make suggestions or those in your life, if you're not a YouTuber, don't be ashamed of where you are or how you got there because it's part of your journey and your journey is taking you along the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's going to be okay. You're going to make it out in the end. If your goal is to be debt free, you will eventually make it. It might not be in six months. It might not be in two years. It might be in 10 years but you're going to make it. So keep up the hard work, keep up the positivity, and never stop believing. All right, enough of the chit chat. Let's get into these numbers. All right, everybody, I've went ahead and updated my debt payoff yearly check-in. I don't have this on my Etsy shop, but if you're interested in it, let me know. I just printed off a watermelon design one because I think the watermelons from last year is so cute. And so on this, we've got the debt name, We've got the starting balance. This is the beginning of your journey. Last year's balance, today's balance, and then plus or minus. I'm not going to use this for everything, but we're going to go ahead and talk about every single thing that is in our debt journey and our savings journey and what was there three years ago. So the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do, our starting balance is from April of 2020. And then of course we've got last year's balance, which is April, 2022. And then we have today's balance, which is April, 2022. And believe it or not, I filmed this on exactly the same date last year as I did this year. It kind of cracked me up. So I must've procrastinated last year as well. So the first debt you guys already heard me talking about, and I'm just gonna put my initials right there, or my initial I should say, is my credit cards. So in April 2020, I had $48,280.19 in credit cards. We're not talking anything else besides credit cards. This isn't personal loans. This isn't vehicles. This is credit cards. Then I'm excited to say that last year, they were zero. Now we're going to wait to fill in the last column until the very end. And then I also had some student loans and this is for my bachelor's in criminal justice. Now this is small as far as, you know, and actually these weren't student loans. It was just financing through the college, but I owed $3,615 and I had paid that off by last year. And then I had my car and my car in April, 2020 was 30000 
and 82 cents. Last year, my car was $14,713.69. So last year for consumer debt, all I had was my car and it was at $14,700. Then we've got us and my hubby and I purchased six acres of land together and you will hear about this on my channel. And I just realized that I didn't write down the beginning number of the property on this sheet for some reason. We purchased this property when we did not have the money to purchase it. We should not have. We took personal loans. All right. And so I had already paid my loan off. This was my husband's loan right here. He took a larger loan than I did, though. So it was $13,000. $611.66. We had paid that off in full by last year. And then we have my husband. Now my, oh, wait. Then we have us and credit cards. In April 2020, we didn't have any credit cards together. So that was not part of our debt in the beginning. We had credit cards together in April 2022, but they had zero dollar balances. So this is Home Depot, American Airlines, um, things like that. Now this year is a little bit different, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And then we have got my husband. And so in the beginning, my husband, his number is one big number because like I said, he was ashamed of the debt he had gotten himself into and where his finances were. So this includes credit cards, the house, and a truck. Now, I'm gonna do this right here because all three of these are included in this large number for him. He had a total of $270,217.65 in debt in April of 2020. Now, last year, I broke it down and separated it. So, he had $7,000, $728.62 left worth of debt. The home was refinanced and it had $183,922.84 left on it. He sold his truck and changed his financial uh, situation by doing that. So he owed nothing on a truck because he had sold it. Now that's our debt. So we've got, we're going to do our debt total right here. But I told you guys I was going to save, I told you guys I was going to share our savings numbers with you because I believe that is part of this picture of our debt-free journey because not only are we trying to be debt-free, but we are trying to be financially independent. So we've got our debt total, which... I didn't even figure out the numbers. So if you look on my sheet right now, these are blank. So we're gonna leave that blank. So we've got savings and this is in the bank. So this could be in any account. Right now we use a lot of Capital One 360, but I also have Wells Fargo, Discover, my husband has USAA. So we have a lot of different banks where this money is. And before I think I had one or two accounts, but we had together $1,000 in savings. Not great, right, you guys? And we only had this because I had started my journey a little bit before my husband. Savings for cash-based. As we know, I'm a cash-based budgeter with um, sinking funds and such. We had nothing. Then something that I'm adding this year that I haven't added before because I do think it's important because it is another form of savings is HSA. And in 2020, my HSA was $4,102.69. Just so you guys know, that was below what my family deductible was for the year. So if something would have happened with the whole family, I wouldn't have had enough money to pay for it. And I know I didn't go across on this one. I apologize, you guys. So our savings in the bank in April 2022 jumped up to 
$70.75. Some of this is sinking funds, so it goes up and down. And some of, his, of it is long-term savings. Now, I don't have any sort of 401k um, or retirement. We don't, neither of us actually have a 401k, but I don't have IRAs or anything listed on this. So we're just going savings and debt. That's all we're doing. We're not doing any sort of investments tracking on here. So $28,470.75 at the bank. And we had $4,636.00 in cash in 2022. My HSA was close to the same thing. So $4,312.06. So it hadn't grown much, right? In two years, that's because the HSA gets used. Um, between putting braces on both of my children, between a couple surgeries for me, you know, the money gets used. So let's go ahead and talk about today's balance. Um, we're just going to rip the bandaid off. All right. So you guys heard me say that I did some creative financing for my vehicle. So I currently have $8,475.92 on my credit card at 0%. This was one purchase for my vehicle. You guys, if you watch my budget videos, you know, it started out at 10,500. So we're already down 2K in about a month and a half. So that is my focus right now. I am going to have that paid off and own my car by the end of the year. So of course, college is still paid for. That $14,000 debt for my car, I was making double payments and then I took money out of my emergency savings to finish paying it off. So $0 there. So when you look from last year to this year, for me personally, I'm still down, even with getting a vehicle that was almost brand new. Now, property for us still paid off. Obviously, we don't uh, have anything, but I included us credit cards for a reason. We are doing our Home Depot project. And so right now, we owe $4,277.87. For anybody that watches my other channel, um, if you saw the canning shelves that I now have in my kitchen, it's for those. We also are doing built-ins in the living room, and my husband is doing another project in the kitchen, which I will reveal on the other channel, but not this channel. So it's three different projects, but also my husband has gotten some tools and stuff like that. And yes, he is in the construction business, and so that could be business expenses. But in the beginning, there's not as much funds as they would like. So he's been buying some of the stuff himself because that's what business people do. And now my hubby, he did the credit card game this year, did a balance transfer, but he had gotten himself a little upside down and had done some overspending. So he did a little bit extra. Now he's still down, but not down as far as he was. So he has $6,247.13 still in credit card debt. So $1,500 down in a year. But it was more, like I said. And he doesn't have a lot of extra money to do a huge debt payment. So the house. Let's talk about where the house is. So the house is now at $172,286.13. Now, my husband, for a truck, he sold his other truck to fix his finances so he could start the business, right? And then because of the business and having a crew, he needed to get a different truck. Now he did not go out and buy an $80,000 truck. He went out and bought a used truck. It's not exactly what he wants. And if the business keeps going where it's going, then most likely the business will be buying trucks. But for right now, this is what we're looking at. So the truck right now, he owes $19,499.70. Now you guys can see why I'm nervous to share this with you. I don't know if we're going to be up or down, okay? Let's talk about some positive stuff, though. Let's talk about what we've got for savings. So we are getting ready to go on a trip. So remember, some of this is going to be vacation money. But vacation is already paid for. All the flights, the all-inclusive, our diving, all of that stuff is paid for. So none of the money that's here is for any of that. So in the bank, between all accounts, 
we have $37,674.87. Now, a good chunk of that is our Australia savings. So when we go to Australia in 2024, when I do my debt update and stuff in 2025, boy, it's going to change a lot. And then I just realized I wrote 2022 up there. Wow. Just can't get good help nowadays. <laughs> and for cash, and this is different locations and stuff like that, but $6,792 in cash. And check this number out, you guys. I'm super proud about this number right here. Um, I started putting extra into my HSA. My husband, since he doesn't have his own HSA, we started putting money from him in there. And so the HSA is now five figures, $10,183.31. I think that's okay. What do you guys think? All right, let's rip the Band-Aid off. Let's get these totals added up. So I'm going to go ahead and add up this total right here. So we're going to do a debt total, a savings total, and then we're going to go ahead and subtract them out. Savings total. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. All right, so we've seen our numbers right here. So our debt total in April of 2022 between my husband and I was $365,872.32. Two years later, we were at $206,365.15. So that was a huge difference. Now, for savings, another huge difference. In 2020, we had $5,102.69 when we include the HSA. And then in 2022, another huge difference. We had 37,418.81, right? So are we on board so far? Let's go ahead and do this math together because I have not done it. So I have no idea what this number is going to be. So we have 8,475.92 for my credit card. Then for us, for credit cards, we have 4277.87. For my hubby's credit card, we have 6,247.13. For the house, we have 172,286,13. And for the truck, we have 19,499.70. So we increased our debt. This is why what I was afraid of. But you guys, I am here to keep it real with you no matter what. Because this is real life. My husband needing a truck in order to do his business was real life. So if you look at that, that's a $20,000 expenditure right there. So that's real life. Did I need a new car? No, but I wanted one. And that's going to be paid off before we do the next check-in. All right. So it is what it is, as we say. Let me grab a highlighter. And let's highlight this debt total right here. So we've got it. So let's take a look. We went up. How much did we go up? So the plus minus right here is just going to be for the year. So we're just going to do 2022 to 2023. So we went up, you guys. 210-786-75 minus 206-365-15. So we went up $4,421.60. But... When you look at the expenditures that we made, you understand why our debt went up. We had two different vehicles. We also have a Home Depot account that's sitting at 4277 And so you're just going to have to stay tuned for 2024's update to see what we've got. 
All right, let's take a look at savings because I know that this one's going to be good. I can tell. Look at that number, you guys. So our debt may have went up, but our savings also went up. Wow, that's an awesome number. So 37, 418, 81. So our savings went up, you guys, in a year, $17,231.37. So overall, when we take off our debt, we are still $12,809.37. And 77 cents above in the positive compared to last year. So that is the debt total. But let's take a look really quick, shall we? Let's do these other numbers. So let's see, how did I put that? Okay, that was just there. So 365, 872, 32 minus 5102. 69 in savings. So that was 3,000, or I'm sorry, 360,000. 769, 63. And then 206, 365, 15, minus 37, 418, 81 in savings. That dropped us down to 168. 946.34. And then let's take a look at this year. 210.786.75 minus 54.650.18.156.136.57. Now, of course, that shows a growth as well. So, right here we had a debt of 168,94634 that we couldn't get rid of using everything we had. Obviously, we're not using this money for debt. We're not going to. So if anybody says you should take that $37,000 and pay off your credit card, the Home Depot card, your husband's credit card, and you know his truck, we're not going to do it because that is our financial security. That is my get out of jail free card, if you want to call it that, especially in the field that I work in. So uh, that is my numbers, you guys. Well, you guys, that's it. The good, the bad, the ugly. I always promise you guys that I will be 100% real with you. And so our debt went up. It happens. Life happens. And I am okay with where we're at. I still believe we're on the right track. I still believe we're in the right train. And I have no doubt with our plans for this year that you're going to be blown away by the change next year. For those of you guys that have been along for almost the entire ride on this train, I want to thank you guys. Of course, I wish I would have started my journey back in April on YouTube, but... I didn't. And so, of course, I started my journey in December of 2020. So uh, for those originals, those OGs out there, thank you so much. For everybody else that has joined along the way, thank you for your support and your kind words. And I hope I don't get a lot of hate on this since our debt went up, but I'm here to keep it real with you guys. So if you have any questions, any comments, make sure you leave them down below. Make sure you like this video. Share it if you want to, to say, hey, look at this lady. She's on a debt-free journey and she has more debt this year than she did last year. Whatever it may be. All right, everybody, that's it. I'm kind of talked out. And honestly, I'm so happy I got this done because now we know where we sit. I'm going to show, go show the hubby where the numbers are. We knew without doing the numbers that the chance that we were going to be up was good. And of course, the biggest thing was his vehicle, not even necessarily my vehicle because I had a vehicle debt last year and he did not. But yeah, so that's it. Uh, so until I see you guys next time, remember to keep on smiling. Bye everybody. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, y'all. 210 786 75 minus 206 Three six five one five. What did I do? Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.